let's talk about the three main things we'll be focusing on in this course. The first thing we'll focus on is our hero of the course, SQL. SQL stands for Salesforce Object Query Language. It's a very formal name for a very simple concept. SQL is like a Google search for your Salesforce org. Using SQL, you can programmatically search your org for any records or settings. For example, we might want to use SQL to search our Salesforce org to see if we had Mark Benioff in it as a lead. If he's in our org, our SQL query would return a result like this with his record information. Similarly, we can use SQL to search our org for an account named Salesforce, and our SQL query would return us all possible results. We'll get into a lot more detail on SQL in the next module. The second focus of this course is to learn how to use Apex and SQL together. Apex and SQL are like peanut butter and jelly. Separately, you know, they're pretty tasty, but nothing I go out of my way for. Put them together though, and mm -mm -mm, you have yourself a delicious treat. This is what combining Apex and SQL looks like. And this is what you're going to be able to write by the end of this course. Check it out. SQL is embedded directly into the trigger itself. Don't be fooled into thinking SQL is a whole separate language you need to learn. SQL is merely an extension of Apex. The two were meant to be used together, and it's rare you see them apart. Now, why do we need to combine Apex and SQL? Well, SQL lets you access records that aren't in trigger.new. Wow. Think about that for a moment. SQL lets you access any record in Salesforce, which means Salesforce becomes your playground to do whatever you wish in it programmatically. Let me say this again to make sure you understand the gravity of this power. Before SQL, we're only able to access or modify records in trigger.new or new records that we create in our triggers. But now, with the combined powers of SQL and Apex, we can literally access and modify any record we want in Salesforce. Anything at all. No limits. No weird restrictions. Anything. And the crazy thing is, that might not even be the best thing we're going to learn in this course. That's because the third and final focus of this course is to learn how to write useful test classes. Oh no. I've said the word now. Here comes the collective eye roll. Test classes. The world's most interesting subject. But I tell ya, there's a big difference between the test classes we used to write and the test classes we're about to write. Let's take a trip down memory lane and look at this important lesson we discussed all the way back in Apex Academy number one. There are two requirements for test classes, and up until now, we've only really satisfied the requirement on the left. 75% code coverage. As for the requirement on the right, well, we've always just ignored it. We can't have an assertion fail if we don't make any assertions. So we've conveniently skipped this requirement. But it just so happens that assertions are wildly useful to us and choosing not to use them was doing ourselves a big disservice. And now that we're going to have SQL under our belts, we're ready to make test class assertions. Trust me, this is a very good and useful thing that will add a layer of protection around your org and possibly save your job. We'll go into assertions in detail later on in this course. So to summarize, up until now, we've been writing test classes purely because Salesforce forced us to. Sure, it's satisfying seeing 100% code coverage from our test classes, but really, Salesforce benefited more from those test classes than we did. That changes today. With the power of SQL, we're now ready to make test classes work for us. Take that, Mark Benioff.
time to explain why SQL is so instrumental to your coding power. To illustrate, let's take a look at the power graph. This graph shows you the relative power versus complexity of the various Salesforce technologies such as Workflow Rules, Process Builder, and Apex. You'll notice you get exponentially more powerful with each step up in complexity. But don't worry about the complexity. I'm going to make sure that's manageable for you. The key here is the power and making sure that you take one step at a time and hit that inflection point where your Salesforce powers accelerate. Apex Academy number one brought you right about here on par with Process Builder. Apex Academy two takes you one step further. In this course, we take a big jump up in power and start doing things that you really couldn't even dream of doing using point and click tools. And I think at the end of the day, you'll really be surprised at how simple SQL is. To be specific, here's exactly why SQL makes Apex so powerful. To understand this, you need to understand the general limitations of the declarative Salesforce tools. Let's take a look at workflow rules. The thing about workflow rules is you're only able to do field updates on the base record and maybe its parent record. Cross object field updates are extremely limited here and only sometimes available if you have a master detail relationship between them. Even then, the type of field updates you can do are limited to simple formulas. Process Builder is only slightly better. You're able to do more cross object updates, but only if the objects are strictly associated with each other via a lookup or master detail relationship field. And still after that, you're limited to simple field updates. For example, you can't update relationships between records very well. Apex code combined with SQL, however, opens up Pandora's box. With the power of SQL to search for any record, anything in Salesforce is now fair game to update. Absolutely no restrictions here. You can even access and update org level settings now. For example, currency conversions. In fact, there's going to be a whole slew of things you can update now that you would have never even dreamed of doing given the point and click limitations you're accustomed to. Really, with SQL, your power is only limited by your imagination. So take heart and know that this is the course where you become way too powerful for your own good in Salesforce. There's going to be a lot to learn and I promise it'll be worth it. Don't feel bad if it takes you a few tries to get things right or if you need to rewatch portions of this course before things fully click. That's perfectly normal and all part of a normal, healthy learning process. It'll definitely be worth it.